Alrighty, so continuing on from yesterday, I uh, went to bed and I can see my application is ready and available. Uh, let this bring this over. Alright, so the reason Teams isn't in there, I removed it because it eventually got installed as part of this so like we can see Teams is here now this is going to lead into the next topic uh, possibly not in this video because there's something that I've got to do in order to do it but uh, you generally don't want your admin accounts in the global address list But yeah, uh, how this works, basically, you put you put all your apps in, like so. You know, you get your line of business apps, just how we did before uh, in the app information. Right, show us featured app in the company portal. Right, so that's all in there. That's all good. That shows in here. Now, the user signs in. Okay. You don't need to put it in as a featured app because it will show as recently published and then under app categories, it will show in all those categories that you selected they can install the same thing from anywhere additional info yeah and all they've got to do is hit install now if you were to put that as a required app yeah like say you've got an internal IT department or even if you've got uh, like PowerShell 7 specific scripts that you need to run you can enforce this install on every device and then it will be able to run those PowerShell scripts but um, I've also added a couple more configuration profiles nothing too over the top it's just what we've done previously with you know, like all those other yeah there we go PowerShell 7 now installed and now I can there's my PowerShell 7 no other user interaction doesn't require admin privileges to install uh, yeah i mean this i've just come through i picked a template the admin templates yeah and just turned a couple of things off turned a few things on so i mean this hasn't applied yet but I'll get a notification here saying that uh, this is managed by my organization. You know, see this one's turned on. I can't turn that off and I can't turn this on either. Not available, but if this device is off for say, you know, two months, that there will force it to come up like it will force it to catch up to date and give me one day to restart uh, but what i want to do because we've been using these templates previously 
just want to show you if you've got the settings catalog as well. being lazy with the description if you're in a professional environment try not to be too lazy with your descriptions um, it's okay as a placeholder but do go back and edit them just for you know the sake of everyone else that has to also work on it uh, let's see we can uh, we can select firewall and you can pick one of these to come through. Um, don't actually need any of those. Google, perhaps, uh, you can uh, you gotta drop that down. All right, so you can set specific things and policies to configure Google, Google Chrome to run in a particular way. Now you've got like human presence, so you know, let's just enable those. Force lock timeout. <laughs> so, this is when uh, when you leave the device. You know, like, and your monitor goes to sleep. This is the time before it gets locked. And then they have to put in their password or pin. Uh, instant wake, you can turn it on. Yeah, you have a wake interval so that the machine will stay awake. So if it's for a industry that you know renders large jobs and the machines are required to stay awake, uh, that's another way that you can fully lock it. I mean, we don't, I don't want to configure all those on here. Like this is just my gaming rig. So, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams. Uh, you know, this one's a handy one because I, I personally hate applications that come up like they start with Windows every time you sign in. And you don't want to use them all the time. And, you know, they don't start exactly at the time that you log in. So you'll be in the middle of something and then this piece of shit application pops up and steals focus. I hate it. So this is how we can prevent teams from starting automatically. Uh, you can take it further. Just, you know, um, you can allow it. So, on this managed device, you are only allowed to sign in to this organization. So, you know, that would prevent me from being able to sign into my work account at home uh well not that it, if i put it on my home pc that would prevent me from being able to sign into my work account if the company i work for were to place this policy i would have to you know, uh, i would have to place the tenant in here so that's the only thing that I'm allowed to sign in is 
there, so I wouldn't be able to use this account here. Right, OneDrive. Uh, now you can you can configure specific things. Um, yeah, this one's handy. This one's handy, so you don't want people filling their hard drive up. Uh, right. I don't really. Oh, yeah, this one. Uh, set that to production. So that will force OneDrive to stay up to date. Uh, tick that one because you know you don't want to accidentally delete something you don't want. Let's see, I mean, you can come back through and add any of these at any time. I just want to quickly go through some of this, like uh, this one, allow hibernate. I don't like hibernation. Uh, a lot of these apply to laptops. I'm pretty sure this will apply to PCs because they're in the uh, right, so that's in seconds as well. <laughs> so, um, I'm just going to turn that off. I can't be bothered working it out right now. But printer provisioning, you know, if you have shared printers, you can uh, set those up here. Uh, security. Right, so you can have right. Uh, allow power sleep. Oh, yeah, so that allows the power and sleep settings availability. This one, yeah, that's just regular account. Uh, online tips. Uh, yeah, we'll allow that. That's okay. Uh, remote desktop. Um, Generally, don't want remote desktop enabled right to the devices. So, let's see what else we've got in OneNote. Let's come back to the other one. Yeah, like you can do certain things as well, like completely lock um, like OneNote itself, you can completely lock so that uh, it's only available on the corporate device. I, yeah, I, I don't think OneNote is generally used for storing sensitive data, but never underestimate what kind of weird usage an end user will have. But yeah, you just come through, sign all your scope tags. Uh, add your group and create. 
and that's how you manually create your policy. Uh, PowerShell scripts, so if you've got a PowerShell script, uh, you can manually upload it to here. So, um, let's see. Yes, code install. Uh -huh. Right, so let's just say uh, yeah, let, <clears throat> let's just say you want to force the PC to change its time zone every time. I don't know why you would. You can do multiple things. Uh, you need to actually spell this correctly as well. Uh, what else can we make it do? Make it get uh, that dash is needed. Yeah. It's going to go through, yeah, so literally anything by Microsoft, so that will tell me every application that I've got installed. Right. Um, I mean, Microsoft is a bad example because you're going to get so many results. But uh, let's see, we'll find one to do with Office. So if I haven't already gone past it. Okay. Yeah, let's see, we might be able to. Um, we just have office. Like that. Yeah, there we go. That brings up a bit of a shorter list. And that will tell you everything that's installed to do the office and then we can type that uh, 
We can save that as, and I'm just going to do a document. Don't have to call it logon, but yeah, just make sure it runs. Okay, so that's not going to. Right, that's because I spelled it wrong. Um. Access to the registry key is denied. <laughs> oh, that's because I'm not running as an administrator. Right, but that there will work. Um. Okay. Fine, then, yeah. It's on remote side, so. so. Now it's set to restricted. Right. Uh, that's been saved. Right. Let's see. Find that script. That's in my documents. Let's go to here as well. Okay. Um, so we have this. Uh, formatted to HTML yet yeah. just gave us the info for it but I'm just going to delete that uh, run it using the logdom credentials so that'll run in the user context if you say no it'll run on the system context so if it's something changing system settings uh, I mean that that's also not necessary for this one but if you require 64-bit shell uh, tick yes and if you require it to change system level parameters uh, you know like that remote sign thing um, you'll want to have no on there uh, and then yeah, it's exactly like everything else set your scope tags tags and groups and yeah all right cool so now that's your powershell script um, I, I call it a logon script. It, it will just run eventually. Uh, and once it realizes it's assigned, come over here. We should have device configuration. See, it's only got these two so far. It hasn't realized I've got the other ones. Oh, and uh, I've um, since gone and changed and fixed up my secure boot. So now I can have this enabled. And um, 
this is also good because if you like to mess around with certain softwares, uh, some are a bit shadier than others. This this gives you a good idea that something has messed with your system. If your code integrity and secure boot are suddenly turned off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, quite the lie. I have a lot more total storage. It's only reading the C drive. Yeah, um, just make sure that's set right, right, and we can sync. Don't know if it's run yet, no, it's still sitting on restricted, but um, basically, the time that it takes to run. Um, yeah, it, it's just random how long it takes. But uh, what I mentioned with Teams and these admin accounts being shown. So if we come over here, we can see. Right, uh, might be under mail, yeah. So showing global address list, All right? So literally just untick that box and it's no longer there. Now, there's another way you can get to it as well because all of that is, um, uh, cool. All of that is actually managed over here. So it's just that um, exchange is the opposite. If it's on, then it's being hidden. So it says hide from address list. Whereas this says show in global address list. Right, so that's no. Um, now this one see the sync status right so this is a local synced account um, 99 percent sure that's going to fail yeah so next lesson like th this cannot be managed from this but <laughs> yeah, can only be edited through local active directory, right? And what I need is the exchange attributes to be added. So next lesson, I'm going to show you how to add the exchange schema into active directory so that you can edit these attributes. Um, yeah, don't think that policy is run yet. No, the script. Um, not sure how long it takes for the scripts to run, uh, but you'll see, you know, it'll run successfully, and this will populate. And I will have that um, you know, report file in here. Oh, okay. It ran three minutes ago. Um, but it says it hasn't run. Yeah, still says it hasn't run, but it ran three minutes ago. Uh, let's see. Right. Okay, so that I must have accidentally run it again before uploading or after uploading. 
yeah, that will tell me when it's run. That file, uh, yeah, and that that's how you can basically check for yourself. Um, alrighty, that's pretty much. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I suppose you can do app reporting if you want to check some particular user <coughs> is using the apps correctly. Uh, you've got to you've got to set up. I already had.